Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Sunday Morning Coffee with Bridget. Hey, if you haven't yet, go check out my Instagram and see my new coffee mug. (laughs) I got a coffee mug. It is so funny. It's not my own design, but it says, woke up sexy as hell again. I love it (laughs) every morning. And you know what? It just happens morning after morning after morning. It's just great. Never underestimate the power of a good coffee mug. Check out my merch listed here in the links below, and you can find one of the coffee mugs I make that might inspire you today. All right, so let's have a sip of coffee and get started. Today's episode should have a sponsor because we're going to talk about pillows. (laughs) I got inspired because, wow, there's a lot of energy going on right now, isn't there? I mean, really, I'm recording this episode in October of 2021, but whenever you find it, just know that it is exactly what you need and reflective of the energy that you're working with right now. Whether you're conscious of that or not, it doesn't matter, but it's here. There's a lot of stuff, a lot energetically. And that is creating a tremendous amount of opportunity a lot of choices, a lot of like surprises as far as maybe realizations. There is a ton of clarity, my friends. Right here, right now, there is a lot of clarity to be had. At the same time, there is a tremendous amount of overwhelm. A lot of overwhelm. You know that if you listen to this podcast, that you are likely an empath. An empath just means you feel a lot, a great deal, not a tiny bit. Not only when you feel like feeling, you're feeling all the time because you move through the world with an open heart that is picking up intuitively on information and energy. You don't have to say, okay, I want to feel this room to check out the energy of the people in it. You naturally, instinctively, and organically do it. You are moving through the world doing that. You are scanning energy. You are reading energy. You are interpreting energy without even having to think about it. It's an intuitive thing. It's how we communicate and connect with one another heart to heart. This is natural. It's a natural way. And now, here... During this incredible energetic month, the opportunities that come because of the overwhelm. So here's kind of how I see it. We've gotten to a point where we've been feeling our feelings and our feelings are not ours. Newsflash! Most of our feelings, like your feelings inside you, my feelings inside me, are just a gathering, a huge collection, a hoarding of the feelings of all the people around us. The people that we care about, the people that we're in partnership with, the people that we're in relationship with, people at work, people at home, our people. We are gathering and collecting their thoughts through their feelings Ooh, I just, yeah, I just threw the T word in there. Thoughts. Ooh, nobody wants to mess with the mind in this conversation, but we're going to because the mind is rightfully so a part of our human experience. And two, it knows how to work it with the heart of emotions. The mind does use thoughts to provoke emotion in order to have you maintain a certain status quo, which is why thus the overwhelm is happening. Too many of the same emotions are being gathered and collected throughout the multiple relationships and exchanges that you have, whether it be with that person at the grocery store, or whether it be with your boss at work, or whether it be with your spouse or partner. Overwhelm is happening because we have gathered so much of the feeling of other people, put it into our heart space, and now it's all mixed up and mixed together. In the Midwest, we call that a casserole. I mean, you can just crock pot just about anything or turn anything into a stew or a soup or a casserole, which basically means 
any kind of the leftovers you got in the fridge, throw some veggies in there and maybe some kind of cream of something soup and boom, magic dinner. <laughs> Come on, we have to have a bit of a sense of humor. I know we're talking about feelings and feelings can be heavy and tough and hard. I know they're not all roses and cherries and rainbows. I know that. Oh, 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 nobody has to tell me that. <laughs> I feel it. So do you. That's why you're here. That's why we're having this conversation. Okay. So the clarity that comes when the overwhelm is so intense because you won't take any more. You can't take any more in. There's literally no more room at the end. You can't do it. You know, occupancy requirements and such. You have to start making choices to clear, to burn, to release, to let go. And some of those emotions that you've been gathering and collecting through multiple multitudes, years of relationships and experiences are clustered together. There is some theming there in that heart space. There is some theming to the common feelings you consistently go to, the places you go to, the reoccurring patterns of the emotions that you recognize and consistently or constantly continuously feel in a patterned basis. Those are your themes. Those are your piles of organization. Okay, so like if you're doing the laundry and you're sorting things into piles, think about it that way. Think about it very matter of fact, very day to day. Don't have to make it hard. Just go, oh, theme. Feeling you go in this pile. Just acknowledge it. Just sort them into piles. This is when you clear some floor space. The clothes are no longer all over the place. They're in neat, well, sort of. Or orderly piles, how about we say it that way? They're not exactly neat, they're orderly piles. However, so you can see the floor, right? This is clarity. This is what you want. This is the goal. The goal is never resolution, completion, fixing, repairing, numbing. The goal is always, 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 and always has been clarity. You want to be clear. You don't like it when you're clear. But you want to be clear. Your soul is supporting and promoting this sorting process in your heart of the emotions that are overwhelming you because they're not yours. They are not yours. Your soul can't beam up its light and warm up the center core of that hearth, of the heart, unless there's floor space to beam up. It's not a skylight coming down. It's a beaming up from the center core reaching in from the intuition of your spirit into your heart, warming it up because that is you, pure and true. That is you, that. That's why we call it center. That's why we call it core. That's why we call it connection. That is what you want. That is what you deserve. That is what you need to move through this lifetime. And this month, is crazy. There's like a retro Mercury retrograde. There's the new moon was like, wow, all these dreams and desires were intensified and heightened, which made your real life seem even more challenging or difficult or cluttered with old crap. By the way, you're a part of that. Let's just acknowledge you're a part of that. You are a part of the pattern of the choices that have been made in the past. And at any time, you can change. You can change the music. You can change the dance. You can change the partner. You can change the club. You can change the, all of these factors and facets. And that's when the core of the emotion changes. The core of the situation changes and your life changes. Do you see how much power you have because of your emotion, because of your sensing, because of your sensitivities? Lots and lots of power. 
Do not get overwhelmed by choices that you don't need to make, a big outcome, a huge goal. There are tiny source, sources of choices. Can I wash this with this? Is this a dark or a light? It's as simple as that. Sort your emotional feelings and energy like laundry. Is this a dark or is this a light? And if you're like me, you got a whole pile of reds now. Oh, I love the reds, the hot pinks, the corals, the oranges, the yellows. That would be root chakra, sacral chakra, and solar plexus for those who have been paying attention from other Sunday morning coffee episodes. So I know you're thinking, Bridget, you were talking about pillows. Where does the pillows come in? Well, here, let me tell you. Let me tell you. Let's have a sip of coffee first. Pillows are inspiring me today. Because it's the energy of the ability to be flexible, to be utilized in so many different ways, to provide comfort, to provide a barrier. I'm going to tell you a funny story. (laughs) Okay. So our pillows are just like emotions. They're just like all of the things that we sense and feel, right? They're a part of our lives. We need them. We need them. I don't think I know anybody that sleeps without a pillow. And yet they come in all shapes and sizes and forms, different types of material, different colors, different expressions of pillows, right? And lots of different uses. Pillows are super useful, can be used for so many different things, right? So I'm going to tell you a funny story about a little tiny story. Some of you can relate to this about pillows. So pillows, yes, support, right? Back support. Right now I'm sitting on the bed with pillows behind me and a pillow underneath my knees. It's great, by the way, if you do that, put a pillow under your knees. Oh my gosh, it releases the the pressure if you have any kind of knee stuff or leg stuff or low back stuff. So good, so good. Anyway, <clears throat> pillows come in handy, especially if you sleep with someone that has a cold or some sinus stuff or who snores. Let's just say maybe from time to time we've all had that experience. Perhaps, perhaps, I'm not talking about the dog, although this could work for the dog. Take the pillow. Okay, okay, take the pillow. Always have an extra pillow. And place it strategically between you, your head, and the person's head next to you, and the two pillows that are lying on the bed. There are two pillows that are the foundation and the core, the root chakra, if you will, of the bed. That sounds really funny because it's about our head, which is fine. However, the two pillows are at the head of the bed, assuming. Okay, let's just assume that too. Okay, I I get some of y'all have huge ass beds and, you know, that's not my jam, but Two pillows side by side. In between, there is a space. You take your pillow, and your extra pillow, and it can't be a big, huge, fat, fluffy one like the super big, huge, wide. It can't be a, well, it could be a body pillow, I guess, if you want. But just stick it. I'm showing you. I'm doing a demonstration, but you can't see because this is an audio. <laughs> In between. And I literally have this smallish pillow. It's like a travel size pillow, but I I use it all the time in my bed. I have actually two of them that I use because I use it for a lot of different things for my shoulder and for my neck, etc. And I always bring it when I travel. And so I literally can stick it between the two pillows between my partner and I. (coughs) And then I can actually sleep because there's no, it buffers the sound. Okay. (laughs) First the sound. <laughs> okay. Oh, he's going to listen to this and be like, Bridget, really? And I'll be like, yep. The people, they need to know the truth. <laughs> Sorry. Let's laugh, you guys. Come on, giggle a little bit while I have another sip of coffee. Seriously, though, think about the pillow as this metaphor for our emotions, for the flexibility that we can get information from our feelings 
and utilize it in ways that help and support us. So pillows support us, right? And sometimes it doesn't, it's not just one. It's not just about one pillow. I don't just do one pillow. I cannot do one pillow. I have like two pillows behind me. One is super firm. One is really fluffy. I have one that I use for my knees or in between my, my knees. When I sleep on my side, I have one that goes underneath. <clears throat> Excuse me a travel pillow type that goes underneath my right shoulder or my elbow if my shoulders bother me, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Never underestimate the power of the pillow. Never underestimate the power of the energy of the emotions that you have for you. Your emotions aren't intended to provide you with conflict. They're also not intended to create comfort for you. They're inviting you to have options and opportunities. And yes, options and opportunities which pillow do I use? (laughs) Let's try a body pillow. Oh my gosh, you guys. Memory foam, cool gel, whatever. (laughs) So many varieties. Do you see how the choices are challenging? Sometimes you have to try them out, which means sometimes you have to try out your feelings. Sometimes you have to feel a feeling in one of those piles that isn't yours because you have to know it's not yours. It's not right for you. It gives you a neck ache. It makes you extremely uncomfortable in your physical human form. That's not your pillow. That's not your feeling. And sooner or later, you find a combination that works for you for now. And as your body changes, as you have different needs in your physical form, so too will your pillows change. Do you see? All right. <sighs> so for fun, let's do this. In the comments below, tell me about your pillows. Are you a one pillow kind of person? Are you a two pillow? I actually have one, two, three. I have four pillows right now. And I have this really cute, it's called the snoozamole. It's a pig-shaped soft stuffed animal like pillow. I'll put a link below. It's actually going to be one of my recommendations for my uh, um, holiday gift guide, because not just for kids, but for adults, it's so great for for all sorts of folks. Um, I have a piggy one that I got for Mother's Day for my son, my youngest. And I have that too. It's uh, kind of on the side of the bed here that I can grab it if I really need or want it behind my neck if I'm watching a movie or something. So what, how many pillows do you have do you use? Okay. And or if you have a favorite pillow or type, um, no links, please, because uh, YouTube will catch that and think you're spamming me. So just type the brand or the style and help others out. Okay. All right. (laughs) So this has been an interesting episode of Sunday Morning Coffee with Bridget. I hope you've enjoyed it. I can't wait to see all your pillow information. We'll have some pillow talk (laughs) in the comments below. (laughs) And in the meantime, seriously, the emotions and the stuff that's going on right now, listen to me, you guys. Sort. This is the time to sort the piles so that there's... clarity. Clear some space for you so that your spirit can beam up that golden yellow light into your heart and warm you up at your center core and to let you know what your true feelings are. Feelings aren't to be resolved. When they are yours, They guide you and support you and lovingly hold space for you. But when feelings are so much about the world and other people and thoughts projecting into you, even your own thoughts projecting into your heart in some way to control or provide some kind of structure or safety, that is old school. That is not what is available to you now for who you are as a heartfelt, intuitive being. You deserve a life that has more clarity, that you are resourced from your own true feelings 
and you can trust your true feelings. Right now, it's hard for you to trust that because you can't tell yours from everybody else's. So many clothes to sort, so many feelings to sort. Feelings are information until, until you know they are your own. And once it is your own, you are alone in intimate space with your own personal feelings, then and only then, only then can you use that information as wisdom, as alchemy, to inspire you, to fuel you, to guide you, to light your way. To light your way. I believe in you, as always. This is Bridget. I hope today in our Sunday morning podcast, we've had a little bit of fun and also, of course, inspired your spirit, filled you with some hope and tons and tons of pillows so that you can live your life. It's your life after all. So live it. Just live it. Thanks for listening.